We're on the road to the dispersed camping area. It's definitely different landscape here. So far the road is decent. We haven't turned off yet. It's a dirt road. It's 35 miles an hour. Better than a road we were on to go to that last oh. <laughs> campground in Jamestown. Oh. Yeah, but that was only a mile. How long is this? I was just About a couple cool mile and Yeah, I not bad. Very pretty. a bit anxious about staying in this dispersed camping location. This is our first time boondocking in a remote area and we are about to put our equipment and our nerves to the test. Scoria Pit Dispersed Camping is located in the Little Missouri National Grassland located in western North Dakota. It is over 1 million acres and is the largest grasslands in the U.S and includes the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. I found my happy place. This is just amazing. Scoria Pit dispersed camping. It's just outside of uh, Theodore Roosevelt National Park in the little town of Medora. And we were lucky enough to get one of the last remaining spots here. Although the first one I think could handle multiple RVs. I just, just being our first time, uh, you know, doing dispersed camping, I didn't want to intrude on them. We did introduce ourselves a bit because we pulled in there to disconnect the Jeep, but um, I don't think they have the right to say we couldn't park there, but this spot was available so we took it. And it's uh, got a little fire pit. We and won't be using that. Yeah, we won't be, it's pretty warm, we won't be using the fire pit. And it's actually cleaner than most private parks, fire pits and state park fire pits. This whole site has really amazed me. I've took, already taken a walk around to see if I could pick up any trash. There is none. So hats off to dispersed camping people in keeping this beautiful spot clean. We don't see many regular campgrounds that are this clean. We're looking forward to three nights here. We're going to spend three nights here. Right now the the batteries are fully charged, we're at 100% and uh, uh, the solar charger is in float mode. So we should uh, turn in tonight with almost full batteries. We'll just, uh, we only need to turn the inverter on if we need to cook something in the microwave or... Coffee! Or cook, I'll need you know, coffee. Just make a pot of coffee, so <laughs> we'll save that for tomorrow. And uh, hopefully tomorrow there'll be plenty of sun and we'll we charge the batteries, we'll see. This is our first real experiment doing this. But yeah, we're psyched to be here. This is uh this is beautiful. It's meeting all of my expectations. It's just uh just wonderful. And I haven't seen any mosquitoes yet. It is a little windy, so I think that keeps mosquitoes away. And uh, but there are flies. The flies are they're not hanging, horrible, but they're not horrible. We've seen worse. And but the only thing that's in great population here <laughs> are the grasshoppers. They are unbelievable all over the place. You can't walk anywhere without them scattering in front of you. But those grasshoppers are harmless for us, anyways. I don't, you know, they don't. They're not invasive in the RV or anything like that, as far as I know. 
So, but that's it. We haven't seen any other wildlife yet. But we're going to take a ride through the park tomorrow, I think, and maybe go for a hike. And hopefully we'll we'll see some bison, buffalo, whatever. I know they got prairie dogs here too. There's a little prairie dog town that you can visit. So that's what's on tap for tomorrow. This is one of the other sites, um, just down the, just down the road a piece. I guess you could probably get two or three RVs in here. It also has a fire pit, and no trash, or not much trash, anyways. I think I like our spot better. driving through the park and we came across the Cottonwood Campground which is in the, in Theodore Roosevelt National Park and we spotted this little picnic area and we decided to pull over and have some lunch. It's a beautiful little area. It's all in the shade, nice picnic tables, they got barbecue pits, trash cans and water spigots here and there. So, and some wildlife. We saw these ponies running through the field. Um, I presume they're wild horses. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, this park is beautiful. We pick out these hikes and we want to go. And then by the time we get to the hike, it's like in the middle of the day and it's hot. It's 1.30 and we're about to go on a hike without any shade at all. We're what crazy what? shade. It's all, out in sun. it's all sun. What are we thinking? What's the temperature? 92. Oh, 92. Okay, it's under oh, 100. We should be fine. 91. Oh, 91. That's much better. At least it isn't humid. It's hot. We're nuts. That's what we like about the Midwest. Dry heat. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you tell me that a mile in. Very windy, so I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but this is the Colvane Trail, and I don't know anything about it, but just based on the signs, it says that there's a Colvane fire ahead, and that you don't have to report it. So I suspect that there's a vein of coal <laughs> somehow caught fire, and it's still burning, and I don't know if we'll get to see it or not. We kind of passed, I think we passed it on the road. 
we'll probably see it again on the way back. Because we could smell it. You, you, could, you could definitely smell it. Um, I wonder what the story is behind that. I'll try we to get, shall find out. I'll do some research and either put a link below or uh, add some information. But so far, Theodore Roosevelt National Park does not disappoint. It is just amazing. Badlands aren't so bad, they're pretty nice. <laughs> We had another really pleasant night here <laughs> in this, the uh, Scoria Pit dispersed camping area. It was a wonderful night. It wasn't as hot yesterday as it was the day before, so uh, the RV temperature came down quickly. Today we're heading to visit Petrified Forest. I think it's in the National Park or is it separate? It, I think it's part of the National Park. It's like okay. a third section. There's the North section, the South section, and the Petrified Forest section. But it's n it's in neither one of those areas. So uh, it sounds like it's very separate from, but part of. Okay. So, and the way we get there is we're going to go down to this access road that we use to get here and it continues. We already explored down there but we found a um, private property sign uh, so we have to go down that road. I guess that's the way you go. I mean that's the way Waze tells me to go so we'll we'll see if we get arrested we'll <laughs> or shot at. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we won't get shot at. Yeah, we'll be fine. So that's today's adventure and uh, we'll take you along for the ride. <laughs> mile and we're going to choose between the north trail or the south trail but the petrified forest is in between and it says that there's a three mile out and back so it must be that you go here and then you go back or you go here and you go back but this whole big loop here is 10 miles I'm not interested <laughs> I'm interested. ten and a half miles in this heat, without shade. This has to keep unwanted cows off the trail. We don't want no cows on the trail. So far the trail to Petrified forest is not so bad. It's uh, mostly clay. Um, looks like it would be really messy if it would, had rained recently because it looks like people were walking in the mud here. But uh, for us right now, it's a very nice, very pleasant walk.
kind of looks like wood, but it ain't. The wood itself, all the wood fibers and stuff, has been completely replaced by the minerals. But, uh, those were definitely trees millions of years ago. And I guess this area is a much wetter environment. It's amazing. Pretty incredible when you think about it. You know how much time has passed. All this stuff is probably buried at one point. And it's just being exposed by erosion as the, the clay gets washed away. And it's exposing these old tree stumps. Pretty amazing. I use the word amazing a lot, but I don't know the word to describe beauty of this place. I guess he likes to fly. So that was a nice little hike. Um, scratch that off my bucket list. I know <laughs> since I was a young child, I always wanted to go and see a petrified forest. So I got to see one, and so today was a good day. I didn't expect there to be crystals embedded in the petrified trees. That was kind of cool. Um, there was black crystals and gray crystals or white crystals. Yeah. Um, very, not very a lot. Small, very small crystals. Yeah, but they were, that was cool to see. And uh, it was a really hot hike. There was no shade. Yeah. But was, we uh, were prepared. It's, uh, it's 91 right now. Yeah. So it was pretty hot. But yeah. we had plenty of water. We did. And sunscreen. And we took our time. And we took our time, yeah. yeah. It was a, it was a wonderful hike with a wonderful destination at the end. So a reward for me anyways. Yeah, yeah, it still, was nice. Still unable to spot any buffalo uh, other than the one we saw the other day. Up, up on the, the ridge. Yeah. Way up on the bluff. Uh, we haven't seen any up close. Now we're gonna go into town, see what we can find. Now well, we're gonna find a post office and a saloon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. A post office and a saloon sounds good. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. town of Medora. We're gonna take a little walk around and see what they've got to offer. Medora began as a military camp called Little Missouri. It was officially named Medora in 1883 by the Marquis de Moors, an entrepreneurial French nobleman with a dream to create a meatpacking empire. He named the town after his wife Medora 
von Hoffmann. That same year, a young Theodore Roosevelt made his first visit to Medora, where he would later find solace and strength after the death of his wife. Many years after that, he would tell an audience in Fargo, North Dakota, I never would have been president had it not been for my time in North Dakota. After becoming a ghost town for many decades, a North Dakota-born businessman and owner of the Gold Seal Company, Harold Schaefer, took an interest in the worn-out cow town called Medora in the 1950s. He purchased and revitalized the historic but run-down Rough Riders Hotel. He acquired an amphitheater built into the side of a butte and helped create the Medora musical. Then, in 1986, he retired from business and donated the entirety of his Medora properties to establish the nonprofit Theodore Roosevelt Medora Foundation. Medora is now North Dakota's number one tourist destination thanks to the passion and generosity of Harold Schaefer. While walking around downtown Medora, we learned about the Pitchfork Steak Fondue, billed as a one-of-a-kind experience. We watched in awe as their expert cowboy chefs loaded 12-ounce New York strip steaks onto pitchforks and dunked them into vats of hot oil and cooked them to medium well-done perfection. Included with the meal, is a barbecue style buffet with all fixings. While we ate, we couldn't help but gaze at the beautiful views of the Badlands in every direction. We also purchased tickets to the Medora musical. The musical is performed just steps away in the Burning Hills Amphitheater. The musical is an ode to patriotism, Theodore Roosevelt, and the great American West. We thoroughly enjoyed our time here.